Uh, but before I go on, I want to quickly say this. That scripture that said, my people perish. Now, understand that lack of knowledge. Don't read it as in literally. My people actually die and perish for ignorance. And ignorance is ignoring knowledge that is available. Most of what we've been angry about, sincerely, don't blame the church. Don't blame the church. Don't blame the system. We have ourselves to blame. If you blame the church, you are also blaming yourself because you've believed over time. Somebody close to me said, if it takes you 15 seconds to know a fool, probably you are a fool. If you stand with a fool and a fool is talking to you and it takes you 15 seconds to know, probably you are one too. <laughs> Fuza is an uniwala like myself. <laughs> and I'm sure Fuza will be expecting me to say something, but I won't go that out. I just want us to be born again today. <laughs> we will be very born again today. Let me correct some things. What a thing is used for is different from most times what that thing is. We don't define meaning from use. You define meaning from essence. Most of what we've been calling a lot of things today are the things we have used those things for, not what they are. If you enter inside this room now, and I need to climb up to fix this light, what am I supposed to use? Ladder or scaffold? Now, those two are absent, and I'll decide, probably shooting my now says, okay, Kabasa, let's arrange this chair to go up, and we use that chair to fix it. You now start to call those chairs ladder. That is the problem we've been having. Ministry is not a Christian word. It's an English word. Industry is an English word. They have meaning before we start to use them. But unfortunately, we have reduced. If you ask a Christian, what is the meaning of ministry? What they tell you is service to God, is this, is that, is this. And you ask them, what is the meaning of industry? They tell you industry is secular. And by the way, this one, you can do anything you want to do to me. Quote me anywhere. Christ's gospel is secular. If it is not secular, why did he tell you to take it to the world? We struggle with so many things because we don't understand meaning. Worship itself, worship and gospel, sincerely, they are two different things, but they work together. We have worship artists that are calling themselves gospel artists. I will not go too deep into it, but let me say this. Worship is W-O-R-T-H. Then you have S-H-I-P. What? Sheep. That thing is to what? God. But what you give to man is the good news, which is the gospel. So why should you be having gospel artists that are supposed to take it outside, still staying back in the church? So you are still struggling with the identity of saying a Christian guy can actually go and do secular music. <laughs> me, I love the people I work with. Oh, you like, don't like them. <laughs> you know, say when they make money for that. You know, better money. Every Christian, your worship at the end of the day is the gospel. Your worship is not the song you sing in church. Get this right. John 4. He said, a time will come from 21. He said, the time will come. In fact, it has come. Where, where you worship or how you worship will not matter. But it is what? Spirit connecting with the truth. In fact, it is you being who you are before God. Unfortunately, in the church, we build a perfect system. And in a perfect system, you can't find real. In a perfect system, you can't find real. So everybody is trying to form to themselves. I'm perfect, I'm this, I'm that. Mama, man, nalamba. DJYK. <laughs> so I get into the church... The first time I met you, you came to my church at Sule with um, Ibe. Did you remember? Very long time. You were just carrying guitar that time. <laughs> May I not talk that story? <laughs> because when you look back, it is good to be popular. 
minister. They tell us their ministry does not celebrate celebrity, but they don't call you, they are not popular. Same scriptures, Genesis 12. I will bless you and I will make your name great. If you check it with the message version, anybody can check it now. He said, I will make you famous. So why are you scared from the promises of God? Because somebody feels that he has met with, I've known you now, Chidima, for how long? And we've always been friends, always like this. Why should somebody now tell you that once somebody blows, they automatically they are arrogant? It's a lie that most of you actually tell to yourself. Now, Minister G, you see, before he blew up, you used to see him as one young guy in the church that sings. Uh, now, my church, they sing now, once he wanted. Now, the guy, God now did it, something now happened, then the next thing. He's now, he, he said something about value now, no rarity. He now becomes something, then the next thing is, I know he's going to be arrogant now. Probably you are trying to hail at him. He has more to manage now. He has left the two over ten that you know. He has become 10 over 10. But you still want him to be behaving to you. 2 over 10. You now say he's arrogant. You now say, and arrogance is overestimation of self. Who is estimating what? People like me are the most. How many of you even believe that I'm a Christian? Let me be first. <laughs> Let me be sure. <laughs> most of you don't believe that. <laughs> they are telling you, why are you not going to believe? <laughs> not good. <laughs> You know people don't believe I'm a Christian. <laughs> we were on one life, and somebody was trying to attack me. I am a very calm guy. But if you come with ignorance, sincerely, I have an antidote. Because your extremity uh, is actually condensed ignorance. You don't know what is happening at the other side. It is what you have been told that you are working on. And unfortunately, somebody has defined the map of the world to you from where they are starting, standing. That same person has never left this country and is telling you this is the map of the world. It is called ignorance. <laughs> Only there will be higher than that. So we need to know that worship is what, what you give to God. And the gospel is what you propagate to the world, not only as a musician. So technically, gospel music is not a genre. It's a movement. What is our Lord's prayer? Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your what? As what, should, what is in the Bible? His will be done as it is in heaven. That is the kingdom. The kingdom is culture. What Fuzza was trying to tell you. He said, do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed. He didn't say be transformed from your spirit. He said from your mind. Because what really operates on point this face of the earth is your mind. The spirit, yes, should control your mind. But you need to understand that do not be conformed. It means that you should not. We are conformed, sincerely. We are conformed. Because we are not thinking. You call yourself the light of the world. And you, every one of us now stay in the church. There's so much blindness. There was light. And by the way, light is not the absence of uh, darkness. So if you remove the light, darkness will come back. And for your light to find expression, sincerely, you need darkness. There is a need for that gross darkness so that you can shine. If there is no darkness, there's, then you might not be able to shine. So if you understand how all of these things work, you will know that God is not contending with the secular. God is contending against carnality. They are two different things. Who is calling me? <laughs> Stop, please. Okay, let me, let me just say this. How many people can you pastor? Pastoring means, it's not just me preaching to you that makes me your pastor. I should be able to cater. I should be your shepherd. And I can't do that again. And at the end of the day, I've noticed that that pastor title has become strictly a title that somebody wants to use to make, to be a lord and all of those things over you. I don't, Jumoke, we're in the same church. In fact, if you are not careful, you would think, amongst all of our pastors in church, I'm actually the old guy out. 
Because I want, I don't want you to call me that, so that you will not have a conscious resistance against me. If I go to talk to some of those people I work with, if I go to them as Pastor ID, do you think they will listen? I sit down with them when they are doing whatever they are doing. The problem is you are after their acts. You are not after their acts. Most of what you condemn, what you are running from, those things are weight. They are not sin. Smoking is a weight. Drinking is a weight. It's not going to affect God. It's going to affect them. How do you get to talk to them about it when you are running away from them? You say you are the salt of the earth, but you are complaining that the soup is hot. And you are not ready to enter that same soup. Praise God. You are not ready to, you are not ready to, you are not ready to enter inside that same soup. We say industry, I read, I read from one of our top artists, I'm not going to be mentioning names, from one of our very top artists, and he was given a reason, funny enough, this person, till Jesus will come, will be my number one go-to artist when I need to worship, because I've known him for most part of my life. He was, he's younger to me, but we grew up in the same area, so I'm sure... Is it in notes person after Bratosi? We know, but we won't mention names. He's one of the closest people to me that I've also played music with. So he's one of the artists in this system that will tell you that God told him not to charge. And I believe 100%. Listen, God told who? Did God tell you? I will not use my experience to justify the truth. I've been in my church for 23 years. I've, have I ever been paid? Whatever has been built in terms of music in that church, I worked on it. I don't get paid, but I fight for my guys to get paid. God told me not to be paid. I mean, not to charge. It's different from not to be paid. That one is another thing. So, by the time we get to start, to, and the same, like, two people that I know like that, guys, hear this, so, and I'm saying this from the sincerity of my heart, that I actually believe that God told them. I'm being sincere. But don't come and say it out as if there is no system to cater for those things. God told me not to charge, but God did not tell me not to be paid. Unfortunately, because you are big, you get well paid. But unfortunately, most of the honorarium that you are given, the honor has been removed. They give you radium. Because when they are bringing in an artist, I've worked with, if I, if I lay down my catalog, sincerely, you, and with names, I doubt if there is any, even your current top guys that I've not worked with. I know how much they make. I know how much they pay. They pay them and all of those things. And you are now telling us to bring an artist to church. We will now start pricing in a particular. I was feeling very uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable. And I would say, ah, this thing, we can do. And the next thing is, and it's because of the system that you are working. Which system is supposed to be better? He said, do not be unequally yoked. Do you know what that means? It doesn't, don't think about ego. When they say unequally yoked, <laughs> unequally yoked means that they should not be better than you. If you, are, you go and check that thing in Fanny, see, if you, are a, if you are an artist here, but you don't do what they call gospel, but you are a secular artist, wave to me, please. Okay, yeah, thank God I have some of them here. And for some of you that are still scared, I was like that too. And remember, Moses was one of the most misunderstood people in the Bible. Moses was trained all his life to fight uh, Pharaoh. But the very first fight that made him go into depression was one of his own, asking him, who sent you to us? So we, we face many identity crises. I still get to ask myself, am I really a Christian? Because the people who know Sardinia at all are not Christian. See, for those of you that want to go into that system, please don't be scared. There is no system created upon this planet that God is not in it. Except if you tell me that John 1 is a fraud. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with what? 
Is there anything created without God? The devil manipulates system, but sincerely, he can't create a system. He doesn't have the intelligence to. So, the church for me, I've had this conversation with Brother Tosin and EZT, that look, how many of us know farming here? Farming, farming, agriculture, we did it in secondary school now. Ah, am I alone? We did farming now. So, look at farming this way. You know farming, there is nursery in farming. There is farmland. Then there is forestry. So, when you go to the nursery, the water, the um, fertilizer, everything that they give to the plants is controlled. Even the sunlight is controlled. When you go to the farmland, fewer things are controlled, then some things are from nature. But you see the jungle, the forest, nothing is controlled. It is sun, it is water from rain or from a river. It is all of those things that happen. And what is their own fertilizer? Guess. Dungs. Sheets. You see church is the nursery. Everything you hear, everything you are fed is controlled. <laughs> Holy Spirit. <laughs> Jesus broke the veil for a reason. I think we actually went back to Judaism. Because if we really stay in the place of spirituality, spirituality connects. Religion divides us. I'm being sincere with you. We are fighting within ourselves because we are not connecting. What is Holy Communion? Holy Communion is just not just bread and wine. It is the communion of saints. Where if I say something, my door agrees. Technically because we are saying, then for us to have that, there should be a system and structure to make that work. The church is a system where everything is controlled. What you hear is controlled. Uh, the way you behave is controlled. The dressing is controlled. So when you get to the farmyard, some things are controlled, some other things are not. But you see this jungle. Everything is not controlled. It's not that it's not controlled, but it depends on nature. When the guys from the church sees the guys that are in the jungle carry their own fertilizer, which is dung, do you know what we say? Hmm, it's carrying shit. But what you don't know is that that is what they survive on. So you start to judge them. That's why we have pew inside church. Which other place has pew? Court room. So you start, you judge good and bad, but you never judge the intent. So you send Christians out to go and do music in the secular system. The first people to criticize them are fellow Christians. Do you understand what I'm talking about? <laughs> ah! <laughs> Christians were the first people. That Christians will be the first people that will come after you. I even warned them that be careful. Do not over-announce yourself. It's inside the Bible. Matthew 10, if you read it, he said you should not be like a what? Like a sheep. You are going to be among what? Wolves. Be smart as what? That is to tell you that you should not over-announce yourself. So they came after him. So what I'm saying is, inside the church, you see all of these things that have been called. The reason why our system from the church is not working outside is what I'm telling you. You over-spiritualize everything, and you also forget that you are flesh, body. If God needs you to be 100% spiritual, then you should stay in heaven. You were sent here for a purpose. It, that scripture didn't say by the renewing of their spirit. It said by the renewing of their mind, which is to tell you that you need a renewal of mind. But one thing that I vowed, and that was the conversation I had with you, that look, I will look. You are in my choir. When I get to address you guys, what do I do with you? This is what I do. I try to, I will tell you that, look, your work in the church does not make, you will not make money. In fact, when you have too much time for church, you will go broke or you're already broke. A lot of you are, I did, that's what I'm saying, don't blame the church per se. You also have a responsibility. Because while we were growing up, they tell us, you look like your father, you look like your mother. But there is a stage you get to, you are not looking like Mama Lucky again. You are now looking more like Chidima, your decisions. You will become the choices that you have made. You will become the decisions that you have made. So you can't keep blaming the church. 
the church, a pastor's goal is different from your goal as an artist. I'm being sincere, guys. And those expectations, I'm not saying they are out of line, no. Because if there is a place that there should be order, it should be the church. Is it you brought people out? Fosa, you remember our conversation at Fola's event way back? That was at Yabatek. Do you know since then, anybody that I bring on a project with me, whether you know or you don't know, I give you publishing deal. She is only publishing that you give them. Me, I give them part of my ownership. Because I know publishing money if it take time to come out. But that part, because I am supposed to be a Christ-like. We only bear the name. We are not that thing. It should not be a problem for a worship artist to have a band members that you are sincere with that look, oh, I am making this. You guys too should be able to make it. But how, how, how will you blame even the worship artist? When the worship artist is still looking up to a pastor to pay so that they can pay the musicians, but whatever they are giving to them cannot even take you home. It needs to stop. That was this conversation I told you. We can't have it alone. Let's have pastors. Top pastors sit down. And you will say some of these things. Because those pastors, too, let's be careful. They are not operating from the place of wickedness. So. They are also operating from the place of ignorance. Industry is the business. Industry, you will see, if you are broke, your pastor will use you to do testimony of person will no succeed. Though. And as a Christian, let me say this so that we can round up. Me too, I'm rushing. <laughs> Praise God. See, as a Christian, go and study what it means to be successful. I'm actually reacting to what um, Minister G.U.C. said. Being successful is not the goal. If being successful is the goal, you will miss kingdom. Success is an experience, the same way failure is. Your goal should be greatness. And greatness means that I am going to create stuff that a whole lot of people should find expression in. So when uh, Minister Frank Edward is singing a song, the song is not just blessing God, it's also blessing, I can, I'm in my room and I'm singing a song. That is greatness. That is your goal. That is seek ye first the kingdom. And as you are seeking the kingdom, which is what you call ministry, please, every other thing should follow. Let the industry follow. The money will follow. If it doesn't follow, you'll be frustrated. And I want to say this to round up. I know you are passionate. I know you want to be motivated. If I'm here to motivate you, I would rather say that I probably should go and quit. But the only thing I will tell you is leave motivation alone. Leave passion. Leave it alone. Do you know what I will tell you to embrace? Discipline. That whether I feel like or I don't feel like, I will do. One of the discipline I will tell you as an artist is before you hire easy or you hire all the managers that are here, hire a lawyer. If you don't hire a lawyer, you will explain tire. That was one of the mistakes I made earlier. I had lawyers, I mean, I had managers, you know, Modef, all of those boys around me. We were, in fact, lawyers are the only ones that can help you keep the money you are making. I'm telling you this. Because the music industry is built on fighting for rights, not on your songs. The model has changed, though. You don't need to blow now to make money. It has gone beyond the era of I have a hit song too. What do you have in your catalog? That, those are the things that are changing. And a lot of us still don't know. We are still looking for a hit song. It has, a lot of things are changing. These guys, they know that you want to do everything. You are your own manager. You are your own lawyer. You, are own, you won't understand those contracts. You won't. And there is no bad contract. Let me say that to you. There is no bad contract. What we have is you, your desperation, your poverty. You are coming to the table not with value of what you want to put on ground to know what you will get. Rather, you are coming to the table by what you need and what you want. You are coming to the table, you are saying, easy, just get me a three-bedroom somewhere in Lekki. <laughs> get me this, get me that, and I'll be fine. But you don't know that by the time they put all those processes into play, bam, in less than six months, the money starts coming in. You will now wake up. Where you sleeping before? 
You sign contract like sworn enemies. Work as best of friends. As in when you won't sign contract, you come. Ah, no, this one cannot go. I can't give you this. No, you have to take that. What are you bringing to the table? This is what I'm bringing to the Do you even know what you carry as a value, as a person? You don't even know. If they ask you now, what are you bringing to the table? You will tell me, eh, my music now. Your social media platform is an asset. Too many things are assets. You come, you tell them, this, this is that we are signing uh, kilomark per contract and signing not other distribution deals. Those guys, they will put anything on the table. But I found out that once they know that you are also brilliant. In fact, now, the Nigerian guys, she knows the person I'm talking about. I try to remove him. I deal with them directly. Because the guy, too, is going to try to make money. So know what you are. Go and get education. Man. That David fought and killed Goliath with a sling. The next battle, he didn't fight with a sling. Go. That you qualified as an unskilled person to win doesn't mean that you stay on skill though that god blew you by doing some things that are not and you don't stay there and you now justify it that this is what god is doing you won't know you will fade out the next battles go and check he was wearing armor he was he was carrying a sword you have to be trained you have to be trained somebody was ready to take 300 soldiers for every other you remember uh, um, abraham now that the guy was ready to take his train. To be trained is better than to just feel that by the grace of God. Does man are still for? Probably all of you should go and learn from the parable of the woman that was broke. That widow. You like miracles. You like to joy over miracles, but you don't learn the pattern in miracles. You think the pattern, the miracle, that miracle, you think it was just that woman having the oil multiply. The real miracle was that she sold the oil and paid her debt. And that is what they are telling you. The anointing created the overflow. But she still had to do what? Sell it. And that was the industry is doing for you. And you are there saying, ah, no, free life I give. Even Bible, then they sell lamb. <laughs> I'm not pastor. My name is Olumide Duogade. I think I first. Do you understand what I'm saying? They, and if you don't get to sit down to know someone, that somebody is telling you something. Ah, easy. You said something that uh, Reverend Sam said, that this is the period that people has to, need to start censoring what you are hearing from the pulpit. I'm not saying that any pastor is bad. I am fortunate to be under a very great pastor. But my pastor knows I don't agree with everything. I will question it. Anything that tells you not to question your faith is a lie. Go and read First Peter 3, 15. Me, I know scriptures. I'm a manifestation of the word. You say you have faith, and I can't see results. Which kind of faith? Even the only time Jesus called somebody faithful was the person being able to transform what he gave the person to make more. Not because he just believed. Let your faith eh, produce results. When you do a song, I've told Izzy, we can't do a seminar to sort this. It has to be a movement. A movement, not a movement to fight. You will miss it if you think it's to go and start fighting some pastors or fighting the church or fighting. You will miss it. Me, I won't join you. But the movement is a movement of education. Let us look. And most of you that are shouting, yes, sir, I believe that you read your Bible. Go back and check scriptures yourself. And you will see things that will convince you. That is what being faithful is. This thing is convincing me. So I can face this thing, despite the fact that logic is telling me that it's not going to work. My pastor is saying, ah, no, but, but pastor, this is what the scriptures say. There is one thing I don't want to talk about here. The day I asked somebody close to me that, so what does this thing mean? If you say that this thing, if we both of us, we eventually found out that it was, stop studying the Jew culture. Follow what the red letter says. Most of the things they are using to put you down, they are Jewish culture. If you listen to what Peter, I mean, Paul will say, and my letter to these people, my letter to this, he was dealing with them based on their culture and what, those things that they know. You cannot use those things to justify something. Some, some, one pastor too came out. He said, eh, but uh, Paul, 
rebuked Peter. I asked him, I said, so because Paul rebuked Peter, are you saying he's right? Are you saying he's right? Paul did not get married, then you two don't get married. We need discretion. We need, as Christians, if you are, I think we've gotten too much knowledge. The problem now is we don't have understanding of what we know. Because all of the, all of the lights, all of the things that have been packed inside of us, they need to start finding expression by youth. First, sit down. Sit down. Sit down. And think about them to apply them. Don't let... See, when Jesus said the kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. Who are the Christ? You and I. You sing Hallelujah chorus now. The kingdom of this world is, is become the kingdom and of his Christ. You like singing it, but you don't know the meaning. That was why I said we have knowledge, but we don't have understanding. You should understand that when you hear the living word, I, you and I should be the living word. We should be living the word. You are a banker. Go to banking sector and live the word. Let them, don't let them ask that are you a Christian. Let them just automatically. I don't want industry economy. You've known me for probably you can see. Don't worry. This babe now my person since. Have you, have you ever caught me do anything out of outside Christianity? Nah, never. And you've known me for, did I toast you the day you came to me? <laughs> Wait now. Yeah. No. <laughs> I live that word, sorry, Tiba. I live it. I know I'm a Christian. Being a Christian is not you saying it. I'm sorry to say, minister, same thing is not about speaking in tongues. So even if you go and read 1 Corinthians 14, it explains to you that speaking in tongues is a private language between you and God. Because, Baba, if you pray to me in tongues, when will I say amen? <laughs> so, it's not bad. Now, guys, don't get it wrong. Sometimes I am led. Why I am leading? I'm actually energizing myself. I lead prayers in church, and I go in tongues. I'm going in tongues. I'm trying to energize myself. Because no word is actually coming to my mind. And I go to that part, and the next thing I notice, some utterances will come. But don't make it an habit. Holy Spirit will give us balance. Will help us to see. So that the kingdom can really transcend from heaven and come down to earth. Baba, those are the lies that some people too will tell you in the secular system that they told me I should not put Jesus. It's a lie. If you put Jesus and it's going to bring money, Terry G did that and it was bringing money. Somebody sang, God, do we? And we pushed it. If it is going to be appealing to people, see, secularism is not an anti-God thing. Secularism is a system that is devoid of magic. God is not a magician. God is a miracle-working God. And those miracles, by the way, start to study those miracles and find the patterns in them. When, God, when Jesus healed the blind man, what did Jesus use? Sand and what? Every element that works with your eyes is from those things. Probably if you understand science, you will know that God is real. The smallest element that they have found now is waves. Sound waves, precisely. And that confirmed, and God said, and Isaac sowed in the land. We tell you that Isaac sowed, but what did Isaac do? He did irrigation. I mean, you've forgotten that he found well, and he did irrigation. As you are learning the miracle, also learn the pattern. Learn the process to it. Learn the pattern. And all those things are in the ministry. I mean, industry. You can be anointed and be frustrated, though. Hear that. I'm telling you. You can be anointed. So, anno In fact, some of you that are anointed will never be known. Because you have refused to also allow the system that is going to bring you out to work. Easy concepts.